at 632. Portia Alexander. Here. Diana Garcia. Here. Kyle McPherson. Here. Randy McPherson. Here. Kenneth Rimes. Here. Kenneth Rimes. Here. Kenneth Rimes. Here. Absent. Mariana Uribe. Here. Actually, we have a public hearing first and forward to the budget meeting now. So now I'm ready. Okay. 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 The public hearing um, concerning the intent of the Board of Education of District 154 and have to sell $3,300,000 in general obligation bonds, alternate revenue source for the purpose of altering, repairing, and equipping the Burnham's Elementary School and for educational purposes. Motion to approve resolution R-004-2024 as presented. We need a motion. Nick Pearson, renewal motion. Um, the person will say Walcott, Marquita Alexander. Yes. Diana Garcia? Yes. Kyle McPherson? Yes. Eddie McPherson? Yes. Kenneth Rimes? Yes. Eddie Sunderland absent. Mary Ellen Oliver? Yes. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We come to the item on the agenda for public comment. Public comments are limited to three minutes per person. At this time, was there anyone, Mari, who requested yes, to speak? Yes, we have Ms. Shavika Levy. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Do I stand up? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to, let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Shamika Levy. I have two boys that have one here. Lamonte graduated and Xavier's still here. Um, we came here, me and my partner, Keisha. We Hi. wanted to introduce to you guys our new organization. Um, mine is called Empower Her Academy. Hers is called Is Her Organization. And we are dedicated to empowering entrepreneurs, particularly teenage and young mothers, and structuring their business for success. We believe that by equipping, equipping Entrepreneurs with the knowledge and tools they need to thrive, we not only foster academic growth, but also create opportunities for individuals to build sustainable livelihoods and make positive contributions to their communities. I'm excited to share that we partner with It's Her, and we are here to launch our pop-up experience, an event aimed at providing youth with hands-on experience in entrepreneurship. The event was spanned for four days and include activities such as pop-up business one-on-one, -on -one, product exploration, and design workshops, and a two-day pop-up where you will have the opportunity to showcase and sell their products. We are currently seeking a venue to host the event and would greatly appreciate any support or assistance you can offer in making this initiative as a success. Thank you for considering and supporting this her and empower her and being a part of our mission to empower entrepreneurs. If you'd like to learn more about our organization, you can reach out to us. Don't hesitate. And pass out the flyers. Yes. So what we wanted to do is actually bring the program to the school where we communicate with the seven and eight graders and teach them about entrepreneurship, see what their insurance are, to get them to either um, try to figure out if it's a product or if it's a some type of service based anything of entrepreneurship and once we um meet with them and we go through leadership skills and entrepreneurship skills and we do that for two days with them and we actually help them to actually launch whatever product that they would like to um our first one we're doing with kids is lip gloss so we actually have the kids to come in mix their own lip gloss and actually label with labels of their own creation. So we're helping them with that. So that's the type of program that we're trying to bring to the schools. And with that, after they finish the two-day uh, program, we want to do a pop-up where all the family, friends, community can come out and support and buy their products. So wait, but he is making more money too. Thank you. 
Thank you. Next, on the next we have Jenny Polly. Okay, so I'm Jenny Polly. I am the kindergarten teacher here, and I'm also the president of the union. So I've asked the other teachers and the other union members to come here tonight. First and foremost, to say thank you for Teacher Appreciation Week. It was amazing. Um, our meals were amazing. Our, um, you know, support from the kids and everything, the PTO. Everything was really great. So just thank you again to everybody on the board, administration, PTO, um, for that. I think we had, like our kids really enjoy it too. So, at least my little extra. <laughs> so it's always fun to see that. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to mention was that um, next week, of course, we're going to be negotiating again. So we look forward to that. And um, of course, we are hoping to not be here, you know, more than maybe past the next time. So we're just wanting to let you know that we're all, um, you know, we're all in to sit down next week and hash through pretty much everything that we can and to talk and, and to get this to get this done. And so the last thing really quick also is that while I was at the PTO meeting the other night, I received a picture from a friend of mine who was at um, an awards ceremony where our very own Brittany Barajas was given the Teacher of the Year Award, which we, as a staff, didn't know anything about. So we wanted, as a staff, to come and congratulate you, Brittany, in front of everybody. Yeah. Congratulations. The Teacher of the Year. Um, nominated, I'm assuming, by, I don't really know, because we didn't know anything about it. So, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> It was at the VFW, yes, and it was the Lions Club, and I have close friends who are at the Lions Club, and they sent me a picture, actually, of our principal um, giving the award, and I was sitting here at the PTO meeting, and then you had said, Mr. Drake, you were leaving and going somewhere, so I didn't know if you were there at that meeting, but... I, I, went to the I knew you, well, you said you were going to the Village Hall, and then I was like, oh, maybe he meant... the Calumet City Hall or something, <laughs> like, I, maybe he didn't mean Burnham, maybe I misunderstood. So anyway, Brittany, congratulations. That's amazing. We're so, as a staff, super proud of you. Yes. And we think you're very deserving. Thank you so much. You guys are all equally as deserving. I feel really, really grateful to be a part of such a beautiful community of teachers that just pour their hearts into our students. So thank you. Thank you. Yes. And then my friend who was there said it was a very nice event, and you did an amazing job. It was great talking to you, Lisa. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You can stop. Okay. And then, Ms. Leva, maybe some, you know, if you would like, you know, her to pursue this, maybe set up an appointment with our principal or the math, and then that would be something they could. This is just a start because right. we're doing my organization, we're doing an academy, like we're getting a building in the process of looking for a building because we're going to teach adequate, we're going to teach everything, we're getting a building. It's going to be a program, we're going to have graduations, going to be prom, prom is going to be far as showing what spoon is the soup spoon, so this is just our beginning now. Right. Because these girls need what to do. They need. Okay. 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 We got too much sexy red. All right. Thank you. Maria Rosales. Last week, I was going just through your website, and I came across some flyers in Spanish and English. And when I read the Spanish one, it was very confusing. And I realized little words like IG, alumnes, and it was kind of confusing. But then I got to the bottom part, and it says that uh, IRC afirma las identidades de género, which means uh, the Illinois Resource Center affirms the gender. So I just wanted to know, is the IRC grammar being used and required to follow by our teachers and the students? And also, if they are required, can we withdraw from it, not be part of it? Do you have any comments? Or we'll take I mean, yeah, the Illinois Resource Center is just, uh, you know, that's that, it's a resource center. Right. It's nothing, they don't supply any materials for us. My separate one. Well, we could follow, we can give you that. If you want to explain a little bit more what you're looking for, I'm not sure. What uh, question. I'm saying because uh, the grammar is different uh, for, I wanted to know if it was for uh, 
for things like uh, gender theory, because I don't know if you know, but as a Catholic, I follow the, the church, and the Pope just said that our gender was a gift from God, and still desiring a personal self-determination as gender theory presents amounts to a concession to the old to the age old temptation to make oneself God. So basically the Pope is saying that gender theory is make is playing God. So I just want to know if we can get out of this because as a as Catholic, this is playing God. How many genders are there right now? How many genders are there? Well, I'm just saying, Lynn, you can make your statement. But it might be just, something that was published by the IRC, and it's not published by us. Well, it's all in your website. Everything in Spanish, instead of saying, like, saying uh, hijo, which is da, uh, daughter, or... Well, the, gen, the, the whole grammar has changed uh, to make it, I guess, gender, gender neutral. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying... I'm just asking, like, is it optional to not be part of this, or why are all the flyers spelled like that? Because this is against my religion. I'm not sure taking specifically the documents are looking at. If I could take a look at it, we could follow up with that on the next team. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, she's with. Okay, I just want to make sure. All right, all right, Mr. Geraci will present the agenda items. Okay, for tonight we're looking to adopt our agenda, approve our board meeting minutes. Um, we'll go over our financial report, we'll read the treasurer's report, the cash balances for each fund as of April 30th. We'll have the administrator's report and we'll, we'll hear from Terry McPherson, Mr. McGowan, our curriculum assessment technology director, and then I will give you a superintendent's report as well. Um, we'll also have the principal's report from um, Mrs. Quite Zal. Under old business, um, we're going over press policy 114. That's the second reading of our press updates. Um, and we'll be looking to uh, approve uh, all of the updates and draft updates, both new and rewritten for tonight. We also have our roof replacement. We had our bid opening today, where we took uh, concealed bids from five different um, roofing companies. And we'll go over that in closed session, and we'll be looking to award a contract. Actually. We'll be looking to award a contract right now because I do have all the closed bids and I have the bid information. So we looked at several different bids. Um, <coughs> when we get to that part of the business, I will go into a little bit more detail. Um, under closed session, then we have some personnel actions that we wanted to discuss and close, including negotiation things that are going on right now. And then we will come out. There's some action requested after close, and then we will adjourn for the night. That's it for the. Uh, Agenda report. Thank you. Motion to adopt the May 16, 2024 agenda for the Burnham School District 154 and a half um, as presented. I'll say. Roll call. Marquis Alexander? Yes. Diana Garcia? Yes. Kyle McPherson? Yes. Randy McPherson? Yes. Kenneth Ryan? Yes. Eddie Sandoval absent? Mary Allen Uribe? Yes. Motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of the Board of Education held on April 18, 2024. I'll make the motion. Nick Pearson, Randy will second. Roll call. Marquis Alexander? Yes. Diana Garcia? Yes. Kyle McPherson? Yes. Wendy McPherson? Yes. Kenneth Ryan? Yes. Andrew Sandoval absent. And Mary Allen Uribe? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to go to the meeting. Yeah, that's good. Education two million one hundred seven thousand three hundred and fifty two dollars and forty seven cents. Special education sixteen thousand eight hundred eighty nine and forty three cents. Operation and maintenance two hundred ninety seven thousand five hundred five fifty eight and sixty four cents. Debt service two hundred and thirty seven thousand seven hundred sixty eight and sixty one cents. Transportation, $53,710.17. IMRF, $15,359.61. FICA slash Medicare, $23,579.44. Capital projects, $635.76.
Okay, working cash, $132,283.90. Um, tort immunity, negative $3,099.87. FP and life safety, $0.00. Motion to accept the treasurer's report for April 30th, 2024. Okay. Approved paying payrolls for April 19th, 2024, $55,559.94. For May 3rd, 2024, $59,169.09. And to approve paying pre list for April 16th, 2024. $55,343.61, April 29, 2024, $455, May 5th, 2024, $61,878.42. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Thank Roll call, Marquita Alexander? Yes. Diana Garcia? Yes. Kyle McPherson? Yes. Randy McPherson? Yes. Anna McPherson? Yep. Okay. Kenny Sandoval Absent? Good. And Mary Ellen Uribe? Yes. Uh, for the administrator's report, uh, I have Mrs. Boyzell, our principal, read us off. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, I'd like to start with uh, bringing up something earlier with Brittany and being awarded to people here. I am a newly inducted member of the Lions Club in Calumet City. And all the other Calumet City schools that beat in the TF North all get awarded at this banquet that the Lions have. However, Burnham has not been one of them that has been. So as becoming a member, I asked if that could be something that you have, my school coming in and being a part of this as well, and they accepted that offer. Uh, however, the timing of it, of the person who was in charge, wasn't aware that Burnham was added in. So it was a last minute, like within a, like less than a week, that I was able to nominate a teacher and get a teacher in. And uh, Mr. Tracy and I both spoke highly of Brittany as being chosen for teacher of the year. So my hope is for next year, that there will be a bigger time frame for me to be able to get another person in and have Burnham be part of, even though we're not Calumet City, we're, we're pretty close to it and you share a lot of resources and celebrate another teacher from our wonderful staff. So again, congratulations. Um, IAR data, uh, preliminary IAR data came out literally two days ago. So uh, very, very, very new data. So in your packet that you have, I kind of laid out where we fall based on the last few years. Uh, there's five levels that you can be in for it. The IAR, you can be an exceeding, which means you're more than meeting, you're surpassing. Meeting is your, your basic. You have approaching it, partially meeting, and then did not get meet. Another way they level this is just by numbers. So one is your lowest, five would be your highest. Based on the preliminary data for this year, for math, we have nine students out of 104 that tested that met math. So we have nine students. Last year, we had two students out of 113. So seven additional students have passed math from last year to this year. For English language arts, we had two students exceed in ELA and 24 students passed and met for ELA. So 26 total students. Last year we had one student that exceeded and 13 that met. So we doubled give or take for that as well. So definitely great results. Um, the one thing I do want to note is last year 47 out of 112, or 42% of our students for reading were considered not yet needed. This year, 18%. So we went from 42% not needing to 18. 
In math, we went from 45% to 18. So while, although those numbers at the time don't seem like large numbers, we're making progress, we're moving, we're making growth, and that is all that we can ask for. So uh, thank you teachers for the amazing job that you're doing. You're making these great games. You guys get, should give yourself a pat on the back that we're, we're on the up and up. So great job everyone. And other amazing news, we have uh, our last curriculum adoption yesterday, the last uh, pilot we're looking to do, H and H. So next week, we're going to look at finalizing and choosing a curriculum. So uh, by the end of May, we'll have chosen what reading curriculum we're gonna adopt and look to even increasing all of these numbers on the next IAR assessment. Attendance, yesterday, we met with Garrett again, who's been working alongside us on the Empower Attendance Team. And I have members here that are part of that attendance committee. He always has nothing but amazing things to say of our school in comparison to all the other schools. We are always the top. So it's great to hear that we are making a difference, not just from where we came from, but in comparison to other schools that he works with. We are currently sitting at about 17% chronically absent. I know that number, 17 sounds like a lot. I want to compare the fact that in 2023, we were 28. And in 2022, we were 38. So looking at those numbers, that is a huge, huge gain. So we are doing very well with being on target to uh, have less than the 20% we're looking for for chronic absenteeism. So very, very happy and proud of the work we're putting forth in attendance as well. Um, this last week, actually this week, we had Candor come in, which came in and did our puberty conversations for fifth and sixth. They had a drug and influencers presentation for seven and teen sexual health for eight. So they came in and they did presentations to give our students more knowledge in those areas. Um, I'd like to uh, Shout out the village. The village came in for teacher appreciation week and supplied uh, a luncheon for our teachers. So we were very happy to have that. And they also purchased hygiene kits for our fifth and sixth graders. Um, additionally, for next week, they are having our eighth graders walk to the senior center and they are having a mentoring program of different things from all the areas so police department, fire department, everyone's going to kind of come in and work with our students, both boys and girls. So we're going to do about two, two and a half hour trip over there. We're going to walk there. We're looking for a great time. So we're excited with our partnership with the village and continuing that uh, with our students. We have summer school starting uh, the process of that. We have currently have about 38 students registered in grades K through sixth grade. Summer school is gonna run Monday through Thursday, beginning June 10th and running through June 27th. We have two curriculums that we are using. We are doing Math for Love as our math curriculum and 95% comprehension and summer boost programs. And those were both purchased and are here. Our teachers that are teaching summer school and our aides that are a part of it as well uh, have been, are, were trained yesterday in math and next week are receiving training in ELA so they know about the curriculum and how to uh, support it and everything that's necessary on all the materials. Discipline data. We are sitting at 43% of students or 65 students without any referrals. So 65 students out of 153. We're sitting at 153 students right now, 65 of them have not received a single referral. I do want to shout out one student and when I was going through all of this data that um, in eighth grade out of the 20 there's 25 and I'm not going to count the 25th because she literally just started last week so we're going to say out of 24 23 students had a referral one student there I was like oh my gosh so um, I'm going to definitely have a conversation and we're going to shout the student out um, at graduation as well so he knows. So don't say anything to the student so he's surprised at graduation. Katie, do you know? Yeah, I kind of figured it out. It's Matt, yes. So, yeah. 
So keep it hush hush for now. So we'll shout them out graduation. So very excited about that. Yes, yes. So uh, you'll see our discipline data if you go through the attendance data. It's similar to things that I've done before. Um, I, oh, I skipped over our attendance additional data. For April, sixth grade, Ms. Porras's class was victorious and took the lead. So um, it's been a fight now between third and sixth grade. <laughs> so we'll see who wins for May between, or if it's going to be another grade level. Fifth grade is coming strong this month, so she's being real quiet here, but she's she's rounding the corner with her kiddos coming in. So we did about 93.2 percent attendance for the month of April. Um, our goal was 95%. We've gone up about 5% every so many months. April was the first month we went to 95. Uh, three grade levels met the 95. Um, I know that's, you know, 95 is real hard to get to, so I don't want to downplay the others. They're all in the 90s. So keep that in mind, they're all in the 90s, but third, fifth, and sixth grade met the 95% goal for the month of April. We're hoping that for May and some other grade levels to keep keep that going strong. Uh, events coming up. Eighth grade's got a lot happening this next few weeks. Uh, they've got the Great America trip tomorrow, that mentoring meeting next week, Springfield is next week, Hot Dog Day the 29th, the dance on the 31st. Um, Mr. Dracy and I just spoke about having um, an additional reward for the no write-up students, the 65 students. We're looking at possibly putting together a bowling trip for those students, as well as a party for students who were within, within less than 5% for attendance, meaning meeting less or not missing less than 5% days. We have 75 thus far that would qualify. Meaning they, they didn't miss any days up to about 5%. So that's like three days, four days max that they would miss. Um, so we're not just celebrating perfect attendance, but we're celebrating good attendance. So to keep that in mind, that doesn't have to be perfect to still make a difference. So the plan would be to celebrate them. Our thoughts when we talked today was maybe having a pizza party for them on the last day of school making sure that they would want to make sure they're here on that Monday for that last day and keep our attendance going strong and not dip us off at all on that very last day. I know it's hard to come on a Monday, so anything we can do to try to entice them to make sure that they're here, we're gonna do that. And then of course, eighth grade graduation on the third. So that is all that I have. Thank you, Mr. Poizal. Okay. Uh, Mr. McPherson. Yes, okay, um, for health and safety report, I have health uh, we will still be using UV lights every day, so for, for helping you get there. Our mobile events is coming on May 23rd and 24th. All the forms have been turned in, we've already over, and we have a list of all the students that are signed up for that, so that'll be done for the next day there. Uh, Guardian Test Control is still doing our monthly checks. Uh, <clears throat> good report on that, no, no critters, no, no bugs like that, so we're we'll doing that. Um, our setup date for this month is, uh, have a setup date for this month here to do it again. Um, uh, looking again, I'm looking at the AEDs. Uh, so we talked to Cintas uh, last week about uh, additional AED at the end of the hall here, uh, because there's a um, we have one in the gym, we have one here on that, but I can have another look closer to the playground just on on hand down there. So we talked to Cintas. I have a little um, <coughs> flyer from the center around to the, the board there. Look at that. The Cintas comes out. They will um, set up a, an AED in both sections. They will mon monitor them, maintain them and uh, a monthly checks on those for us here yeah, for a monthly few and then they will everything's been done so they'll be in on their site they'll give us a report on everything so we'll have it again for uh, our state uh, report for that too so uh there's they have the quotes in there the data's in there the quotes in the very last page there um there's other little help tidbits in there too we can discuss later for that there i'd like to see if we can get another ad from that side there and one in the gym there too uh, just have my hand for any of those more students uh, safety reason, uh, we had a real fasting thing we uh, talked about already we'll go over that with the uh, closed session. <coughs> um, the uh, contractor did do a final walkthrough. They did do their um, uh, final checklist. They're going to give us a uh, next date to come and do the final repairs on the uh, checks and balance there for them. Uh, so we haven't set up dates on that yet, so they haven't yet for me. Uh, building the ground, long care is just still starting. Um, 
he's still doing, you know, every Saturday coming, getting the grass cut, and being keep everything uh, nice and clean for us. Um, we did a walkthrough today with the uh, a lighting company from, it was um, Amoresco. Amoresco here, I have a car here. Amoresco, so uh, Mr. Boyd here came out, he's a project uh, engineer there. Uh, he'll send me in to a quote on the uh, new light system we're taking out doing for the hallways, gymnasium, outside, and uh, all the classrooms and stuff like that. So it's uh, a little benefit for um, energy wide savings for us at the school. So we'll figure that out too, because the board gets here. Um, <clears throat> um, I have the quotes too. I know we talked about it a while back. I don't know if anybody uh, remembers uh, seeing it on the agenda, but we talked about a sign up front. I don't know we talked about digital signs. I brought the quotes again. I know some of you didn't see them the last time. The three quotes here, the past one, too, if you want. Uh, but just to you know, get with the times, if you need times, those schools have digital signs up front. So um, just get up with our you know, up to date answer. So those are some quotes for three companies we've had done before, previous before. So. And uh, that's it. We can, you know, that's my report. So, thank you. Thank you. I'll uh, we'll take a look at those quotes and have those up. Um, for, uh, maybe, 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 of Illinois, uh, they combined seven, eight uh, volleyball um, team, and they they can choose certain ones to uh, participate. And two of our girls were elected to participate in the All State game, so it'll be at um, it's at um, June seventh, eighth, and ninth. will be out there. Seventh, uh, the ninth is the game, but it will be, it'll be at uh, Benedict University at the Rice Center. It'll be the games on the ninth. So I'm going to watch them play. You know they're going to be good at good um, kind of see a run in small state, see other students playing their sport too and they you know and get to new new coaches and new techniques for themselves I and mean, it's kind of good uh good for kids to get out and see what what else is out there. so we want to get them props for that pretty good yeah very nice out yeah thank you um for curriculum assessment and technology mr mcdowell uh, good evening the only update i have is this week we completed our benchmarking in uh, math and reading um, I know we're still working on getting some students that have been absent uh, tested this week. Uh, Principal P and I have kind of looked at a little bit of the data and just want to give a shout out to Wendy White, second grade, and the amazing job that they did uh, this past uh, benchmarking. Um, I can't remember exactly what. Uh, nine kids that scored eight or above. Like the amount of growth and the amount of achievement, it skyrocketed. So they did a great job. Thank you, Mr. Um For my report on cover, kind of what I think uh, we haven't yet covered yet, but I know that uh, our fifth and sixth graders, they went out from Starbase. I know we you know, previewed that before they went out there. It's a very nice uh, trip for science, technology, engineering, and math. Nice STEM program that they had. Uh, for the 22nd through the 26th of April. Uh, we also had uh, a BPAC meeting on April 24th. Uh, Mrs. Myers led that, and it was also she brought our parents out to a summit for bilingual parents on uh, May 4th uh, of this month as well. Teacher Appreciation Week, again, went very well last week. I want to thank everybody again uh, for their contributions. I've worried everybody else, thank you. Um, in our PE, uh, in our room, in the gymnasium, um, we did get a grant that's going to allow us to purchase that learning, um, LU Learning Unlimited program, which makes our gym program interactive out there and also brings in uh, things in the classroom that we can work on in there as far as the standard publication. Uh, a lot of different things that are going on in the gym. Uh, as I said earlier, we're looking at changing out all those halogen lights, the LED lights. No change as well, and also we're doing a cafeteria upgrade and we're trying to do some work around here to kind of brighten up this room in here. We've got new cafeteria tables that are going to be customized in order to brought in here. Um, so looking forward to redoing this as well. So besides getting into some of the more details with the looping and stuff, I'll save that for a minute here. That's all I have for the superintendent. Thank you.
your own business. Um, we have open kitchens. We have a motion to approve open kitchens as our vended meals child nutrition program provider for FY25. I'm sorry. We need press. Press policy under all things. Okay. So, for our second reading of the press policy 114, we have to approve. We have draft updates to approve, both new and rewritten. Um, we met this week under committee with uh, Ms. Alexander and Mr. McPherson here, and we went through those. Um, we did have one of the questions on there on one of the drafts that we wanted to submit for the rest of the board um, on adding a new paragraph in. Again, most of these drafts were based on uh, the changes were based on new law that was put in place. So we're dealing with um, the new one that's in is discrimination and harassment on the basis of race, color, and national origin. So there's a new policy that is in there. Um, they ask these questions about including another paragraph into uh, into our policy on there, and it's committee to be uh, voted that we wanted to include that paragraph in there, which is listed inside um, the statement of the best policies. So if, uh, we didn't have any other questions that were related uh, as a committee to bring in front of you, but if anyone has any questions on the existing policies that you've seen, we want to bring those to the table now. Hearing none, motion to approve press policy 114 draft updates, both new and rewritten, um, and our monitoring updates. I'll make the motion. A second. Walpole, Paul, Marquia, Alexander? Yes. Diana Garcia? Yes. Todd McPherson? Yes. Randy McPherson? Yes. Kenneth Grimes? Yes. Any son of the one absent? Eric Allen Oliva? Yes. Okay. Under our roof replacement, um, and so we had the bit opening today. Um, so under the roof replacement, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different vendors that were interested in, um, in submitting. Um, we had some that did not submit a bid, um, but we had uh, one, four bids presented, starting out on the high end, $810,719. It was the opening bid that came in. Um, they gradually went down as we opened these up in uh, alphabetical order, just happened to be in numerical order as well. Uh, so it went down from 618000 on the second opening, 583000 on the third opening, and our last opening uh, was the lowest bid coming in at 474000 So between those uh, last two, a difference of 110000 on there. So that was by L. Marshall Roofing. They've been in the business for over 50 years. I uh, have copies of all the materials, and there's five here. Um, we're waiting for a couple of things that they're doing, but they said they've been in business for over 50 years. We're listening to all of their past work that they've done and any current work that they're currently working on that our architect is reviewing now. So um, we have a motion. Again, this project consists of one lump sum base bid proposal for the following work. Roof replacement of approximately 15,103 square feet of existing roofing system. Uh, with an impaired PVC roofing system, IR value insulation, wood blocking, flashing, and all the necessary accessories as indicated on the project drawing. So I'd like a motion to approve and award the roof replacement contract to um, L. Marshall in the amount of 474000 for any architectural review of the I did have a question though. Yes. What is, the, are there any obvious differences? That's a big difference. Six hundred and something to four hundred and seventy four. Are there some things that stand out that they may not do that the other one will do? No, um, the one that came in at eight hundred some thousand, what did not come through the walkthrough? They just submitted all the got all the materials online. Mm -hmm. So the last, uh, and he actually the little bit did not submit a walkthrough as well. So um, they 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 put all the information. 
on two of the people that came in, four walkthroughs, put their bids in. One did not, but one did. Um, so different reasons I've heard of, I mean, depending on where you're at, some at this late stage of the game for summer work, a lot of construction companies already have jobs by the for summer. So some might come in and say, this is an extra contract, this might be you know, some type of big bucket it could be a money maker, and they come in with a high bid. If I get it, they make money on that project, and so they purposely could high to see if they can make it money. Maybe some people who didn't don't have uh, anything lined up come in at a lower bid trying to get that job. So, so we've had like a pretty wide range. Our architect came up with, like I said, about a little over a set of 770,000 upgrades. Uh, that block would be bigger than weekly cost. We had some that came over and some that came in under. Uh, so two of the companies, the last two that we mentioned, uh, uh, Marshall and this other one is from Corellis, which is right here in Hammond, in the Hammond. They've been coming along and been there for a long time. Do a lot of school work as well. So they came in at 583. Uh, Marshall came in at 474, but again, it's a, you know, taking off all the old layers of roof, which is another two layers on top of this type of deck right now. Uh, removing all that, removing all the paint, and pull off all of the air conditioning units and stuff on the top of the screen. Mm -hmm. Pull those all off, everything gets started out, it gets screen leveled and flashed out on both sides of uh, the building that we talked about, the porch and front, and porch back. Larry walked through my window. Yeah, yeah, I walked through They're going to do a whole um, system where it's going to be an 80, 80 20 pitch, which is, means most of the water is going to flow back to the back side of the building. That's going to be fun. They're doing the gutters too. The gutters are going to be right into the So the flow system will be well, a flat roof will flow right into the gutters too. So we'll have a little thing to do right into the gutters. So it's all in one system there. It's all a steel system. So I think they gave it to the 25 year, 20 or 25 year warranty yeah. amount on the system itself. So uh, it's all uh, hermetically sealed down, so it's all covered in the outside. Uh, always going to walk with them, they just set down the samples, uh, and that's how they do it. So. so that's what I was going to so it's a 25 year warranty, and they're replacing them? The whole roof is getting all of them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and do we have any um, reserve or thinking about, like, if something comes up, you know, something happens? Great Lakes also had come in and said even if we couldn't get this job done, I think none of the bids were acceptable for us right now. Mm -hmm. We had to put it off the next summer. We were going to have to care for it, especially on the slippage area. Where you yeah, you can really wear them, what's going on. And out here in the hallway, too, where you've seen the infection some water that's going to be in there. Um, so there were some uh, estimates for like, a $6,000 repair job that we would have done and just kind of repair it until we do it again. Um, but they're scheduled to start then, they'll be starting right here before uh, the Fourth of July weekend. Try to bring some repair out and stuff, and that should be completely in the prison of the So, according to the good documents that were submitted, that's the time frame that they're working within, and all should have substantial completion of all that work by early August. Thank you. We still need a motion. Motion on the table. Motion. I'll Welcome, Marquita Alexander. Yes. Diana Garcia. Yes. Kyle McPherson. Yes. Randy McPherson. Yes. Kenneth Grimes. Yes. Eddie Sandoval Absent. Mary Ellen Rubin. Yes. That motion passes. Thank you. Now, getting back to contract renewals. Uh, we have uh, open kitchens, our current meal, uh, meal vendor. So we have a motion to uh, approve open kitchens as our vending meals child nutrition program provider for FY25. Uh, I'll second that. Okay. I'll make the motion. Motion. Roll call, Marquita Alexander. Yes. Diana Garcia. Yes. Kyle McPherson? Yes. Honey McPherson? Yes. Kenneth Grimes? Yes. Can you the one upset? Yeah. Yes. The second one on here uh, under uh, is Perry Farms. So may I please have a motion to approve Perry Farms as our milk program provider for FY25? Mm -hmm. Contract is approved. I'll motion. I'll second. Try 
carries mm -hmm. mm -hmm. she mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> Marquita Alexander? Yes. Diana Garcia? Yes. Kyle McPherson? Yes. Randy McPherson? Yes. Kenneth Ryan? Yes. Camila Sandoval Absent? And Mary Ellen Uribe? Yes. Under subscription renewals, we have a couple on table for NWEA. Uh, license, uh, the renewal is attached there. May I have a motion, please? It also includes the ISL. It does. It's one motion. It's all in one. It's all one. Yeah. We're not doing, it's not a consent agenda. We're combining the two. Uh, IXL uh, is separate. So NWBA, you can see on the sales order, 10 months for that. Uh, so for the NWEA with demand parole and virtual one hour sessions, we're looking for a grand total of three thousand and eighty dollars. Alexander? Yes. Diana Garcia? Yes. Kyle McPherson? Yes. Andy McPherson? Yes. Kenneth Rimes? Yes. Any sons of Absent? Eric Allen Yes. Just to be clear, guys, Mr. Gregory was saying this is the motion to renew NWA for FY25 and we'll approve a five year contract to buy and sell. Again, under new business um, today, uh, during closed session, I'll be here with you guys to make a statement that the evaluation of the number four. But I did look into um, another super evaluation, which is the evaluation of the superintendent, not necessarily super evaluation, but um, there's some pricing on there. We can discuss that a little bit more in detail. Um, just other options to go to give you guys a little bit more information uh, on improving the superintendent's evaluation. So we can take a look at that and we bring that up again in the next week. No motion on the table to do that. So under section M. Yes. Motion to go into closed session at 725 pursuant to section 2C12 of the Open Meetings Act for the purposes of consideration of the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees and matters related to the collective bargaining agreement. Collective negotiating matters between the district and its employees or their representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees. There will be action after. Marquita motion. Motion. Paul Marquita Alexander. Yes. Julia Garcia. Yes. Kyle McPherson. Yes. Randy McPherson. Yes. Kenneth Rimes. Yes. And you said without action. Very Ellen Uribe. Yes. Thank you. We'll be actually after closed session. We'll come and get you as soon as we're